Hello friends, this is Rainer. Welcome back to the video uh, getting yourself organized with old mode. We are actually at episode 7 snippet 4. Actually is a, is a really uh, nice description for not uh, doing videos for several months. I'm sorry about that, but I was really busy with playing Santa Claus and tidying up the house and doing a lot of stuff. But finally I'm on holidays and it's time to do another video for you. So the thing is, I'm today I want to talk about source code in org mode. And uh, source code in org mode is, is, is a concept where I had so little problems because when I want to do a video for you, I, I need an application, I need uh, experience with this function, I need to, to use it myself and to understand what I'm doing with it and I can say, okay, this is a very helpful feature and I'm using it and so on. But uh, really for, for the source code in org mode, I had to think a lot about uh, how can I use it and, and what's the, the purpose of it and so on. So. <coughs> Um, I tried a lot and, and thought a lot and then I looked around uh, in my subscribers video channels and I found uh, the channel of Alex Kobel and he pointed to a video about literate DevOps and then I saw oh yeah that's that's how you can use source code and, and how this function can work for me. So let's start at the beginning. When you want to use uh, source code inside an org file, you have to configure a variable that is called org bubble load languages. We can have a quick look at this. Here, let's see, describe variable. This is uh, org bubble load languages, and you get an explanation. And you see that the default value is uh, Emacs Lisp and I added also shell and I added dot. So we have a shell uh, language for shell script and we have the dot language. This is for graphics code. Graphics is a, a method to draw graphs you will see later. So this was what I had to configure really not much more it's it's really just that let's uh let's close this one uh let's let's see this no this was the wrong one okay let's go back to my sample file so we will start with an easy uh example how you can use shell script uh, snippets inside your org file so let's advance here when you want to enter a source code block, the easiest way is you type the less, tell, uh, less than symbol, like that, a uh, small s, and then you press the tab button. Look here, I'm tab, and you see here in my editor, now it says begin source, end source, I have my code block already prepared, and I say, okay, I want to do some shell scripting. And let's put a uh, command here, ls minus l, temp. Let's see what I have in my temp directory. So if this, this is practically a code block in shell script. And if I want to evaluate it, if I want to see the results of this, I have to put my cursor here. And then you know the magic key, control C twice, it's CC. And you see I get a block that says results and you see it uh, it's uh, treated like a table. You see all the, the things and but you can influence how your results will look like. So let's see on the next slide we could also say results no, results raw. Let's see, if you write results raw, then okay, 
it's like the text output to your terminal. If you say results as a table, same again. You see then I have prepending this and I have my table and I have my output so the better is we just delete this stuff completely. You can also say I want a list. Then you get a list uh, like an Emacs uh, elisp that says well, everything is a list. Or even worse, let's remove that again. You can say I want it silent. If you have it silent, then you see I, I have an output here, but it doesn't show up in my uh, Emacs uh, frame. And yeah, you can do a lot of more complicated commands, of course. And uh, let me tell you about my real world application for this. Because you know, uh, I'm a president of a sports club, and I have to do sometimes I have to do uh, accounting and checking uh, the money and so on. And our accounting software is running on a external server. And when I do an accounting session, at the end I want to get a backup on my machine. So I have made a template that says, okay, we schedule our accounting session for one month that says get all the receipts and put it in the database and so on. And at the end, uh, so far I had written, you have to do a backup. But now I can write, okay, you have to do a backup and you do an uh, pg dump whatever uh, pg dump whatever and so on and then <coughs> i made another uh, code block this that says scp from the local host from the remote host uh, directory file to local host backup directory something like that okay this is not working actually because it's, it's just to show you how this could look like you see this one is grayed out because it doesn't know what language i want to use so let's write shell and then it's getting better so i have my template and this template has just two code blocks and when I'm finished with all my accounting all I have to do is putting my cursor on the first code block control C twice and uh, it does a SSH connection to the remote host uh, does the database dump stores it in the file and then I put myself on the second and say okay get that file on my machine so that I have a copy on my machine as well in case the external server is stolen whatever and I'm done this this is really very helpful very easy straightforward and uh, since it's a template I can even customize some variable names that I say okay for every month I want to have my uh, own name for the backup and so on so this was practically shell scripting code and the other one I want to show you quickly is, is I already have prepared one XF. This is GTD state change org. So now we have a test with Graphis. Graphis is a language that uh, shows you it can can draw <coughs> a graph for you. We also have the results here, but I can kill it anyway, and we do it again and. The graph with uh, command line says you have the, the language dot. You will create a file that is called graph PNG. And your command line for this uh, dot processor is we want to call the external command that is called dot. And we want to create a file of type PNG. And here you see the practically the, the, the script that describes my graph. 
If you know graphics, if you know the dot language, you understand what this is doing. If not, it looks a bit like strange, I guess. But we can bring it to action. We put the cursor here, Control C, Control C. And now you see I have my file graph PNG again. I can click on it and then we can have a look at it. So you see this is a quick graph that, that practically shows my org mode workflow. I capture something and what I capture is either a someday uh, task or a to-do task and someday or to-do they can stay uh, change their status to next or they change to their status to cancelled or if it's a to-do I can also forward it to another one that I say it's not my business it's your business you get it and you see here we have the state changes to this uh, someday goes to to do or someday goes to next if it's uh, created the next action one day or another in my weekly review I decide okay this someday we do it now and it's the next action it's a to do and when I'm here next actions if I just say solving a problem for for somebody I send the mail to that somebody and then I'm waiting and when the answer comes it comes back to next if this man says oh I'm not satisfied I have another question I'm back to status next if the other one is satisfied I can either say okay it's done or if the other says forget about it then we can cancel it the same is true from next or to do I can also delegate to other people or even create and repeat job out of it that means repeat is this is this arrow it's repeating every time every four weeks every month every year every whatever I do something and of course sooner or later I can say okay this was the last repetition I, I removed the uh, time interval from the scheduled uh, date and then I can change it to done so this is practically a, a graph of all the, the status changes that I have implemented in org mode and if you see the, the file it was just a, a short file for graphics where you say okay here we have a box that is called capture and from new idea we do a arrow to let me see it should be somewhere here you say from new idea it goes to next or it goes to do do or to someday right? yeah, the one to next I have commented out so this is why we don't see it here we just have two arrows one for someday one for to do so that's it with um, source code in org mode I guess you can do a lot of more about it but really at the moment I'm, I'm really missing uh, applications and this, this is why I feel so uneasy because I want to show you things that, that I use for myself because then I guess I'm, I'm really much more convincing when I talk about things that, that are useful for me uh, instead of talking about things that might be useful for others so anyway <coughs> one video more on the list and by the way, thanks a lot for subscribing to my channel. This week I really hit the thousand subscribers. That's that's really great for a topic like org mode. I mean, I could be envious to all the nice uh, female guitarists that I'm following. They have 100,000 subscribers, but I guess for this topic, thousand subscribers is really a lot. So thank you for following. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all your comments and your suggestions. I will see that I go forward with this video series. Then Saturday I have a talk about org mode here in the local uh, Linux event day here in Augsburg. And if this is finished then I have I guess a lot of ideas for other videos so stay tuned and see you next time.